Dr. Mark Gangizi here through Science Moment. We are on moment 413. Today I'm going to talk about cancellation and comparing cancellation with humiliation. Now, both sound really mean and bad, but they're fundamentally different. And I'm going to try to convince you or explain to you why cancellation is bad and humil humiliation is an organic, natural, and good, and needed, a key part of the process of, of, of free expression. So let's just, you know, what is cancellation? Cancellation is a way of censoring your opponent's voices, right? You are, um, you are trying to get them censored. You are potentially threatening their job so that they will keep their mouth shut or so that once they lose their job, uh, they no longer have the voice that they had. You are potentially doxing them um, to put fear in them so that they stop speaking. Everything that you're doing, or, or sometimes you're just showing up on campus and literally yelling them down or metaphorically doing so in other circumstances, trying to remove their voice from the public uh, sphere, from the public square, right? Cancellation is all about ending or violating the free expression of your opposition. That's what it's about. Right? Now, I want you to consider something kind of at first glance akin to it, you might think. Humiliation. Aiming for the humiliation of your opponents. Humiliation is fundamentally different. If I try to humiliate you, I want to show that you should have a lowered reputation on the basis of the things that you are saying or have said. So I'm going to argue against them. I say, look, what Doug is saying is wrong or it's silly or there are, you know, biases that are, you know, plaguing the argument or it's special pleading or it's inconsistent or it's irrational or it's not, you know, the, the data don't agree with what Doug is saying, right? I'm, I'm pointing out the ways in which your claims have been wrong, empirically wrong, logically wrong, ethically wrong. And what I don't want to do is get you censored. You want to know why? Because if I'm right that you are incorrect, you lower in reputation in the eyes of the community and I rise by virtue of pointing that out. And the only way that I rise and you lower is if your claims and my counterclaims get spread across the community. I want your ridiculous, wrong, unethical claims to get out there. I don't want them to be censored. I want them to be everywhere. Right? I want them to be everywhere along with my critiques so that people can see Doug is wrong. And so when people realize that Doug is wrong and the more people realize, the more his reputation gets crushed and his social reputation chips get pushed over to me. That's how it works. When we make claims, we either do so confidently or we do so with humility, in which case, well, I don't really know, maybe it's this, in which case we can't really lose much, much social capital on that basis. But when we do so confidently and we're very wrong, we have put something at stake and we lose that. That's how emotional expressions work all the time. And that's how, in fact, actual debate in real life occurs. It doesn't occur in terms in, 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 like a logical argument as it does in a logician or a philosophy course. It actually occurs as, we talk, as Dr. Tim Barber and I flesh out in our, our latest book, Express the Human, it occurs when you emotionally express confidence or or emotionally express disdain in the other person's position, you push in social capital. And if it turns out that I'm right and you're wrong, you lower in reputation and I rise. And that only happens by virtue of the network knowing that that happened. Humiliation is crucial. Without humiliation, which just means the ability for someone's reputation to get lowered by virtue of making strong claims that turned out to be false, bad, incorrect, or, or you know, something along these lines. And, and of course, part and parcel of that is people have the ability to rise in reputation, anti-humiliation in some sense, or to have you know, glory by virtue of having been right. Those are key mechanisms for how the reputations rise and fall in a free expression network. And it's only through those rises and falls and you know, times trillions across the network, all of these things are happening all the time. It's only through that that free expression works to slowly find its way towards the truth. Humiliation of your enemies just means arguing against them, showing that, 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 that they're wrong, and broadcasting that argument. Right? It is consistent with free expression. Not only is it consistent with free exp expression, but humiliation is part of the mechanisms of free expression itself. Cancellation is 
against the very grain of what free expression is about. It tries to violate the free expression. It just simply tries to silence your opponents. That violates the very processes of free expression and ultimately violates even your own interests on your side. Because in the long run, if you're part of a network that has no opposing views, you are headed down the path of tyranny and uh, everybody will spiral downward with that. And that was your science moment. If you haven't gotten a copy of Expressly Human, get it today uh, at Amazon and elsewhere.